Hey, how's it going everyone? So I want to do this short video to let you guys know that WebDriver IO came out with version 7 today. So I will quickly go over some of the changes that are part of this release and then we will go over how we can migrate from version 6 to version 7. So let's start with the changes first. So as you can see, I'm here on the blog post for WebDriver IO version 7 that just came out today. So I'm going to scroll down here to go over all the changes that were part of this release. The first one is that they have dropped the support for Node 10. So if you're using Node 10, I would recommend for you guys to update to the latest Node version, which is version 14 or higher. And they also tell you here how you can do that. Either you can do it through NVM or you can upgrade your Docker environment. All right, the next biggest change that they have made for this release is that they have rewritten all the WebDriver IO code in TypeScript. Now, if you're a TypeScript lover, this is the great news for you as you will get better type support with WebDriver IO now. For everyone else that are still using JavaScript with WebDriver IO, it's still a good news as part of this rewrite, they have fixed a lot of bugs that you might have encountered when using WebDriver IO. So for the TypeScript projects, there are a couple of changes you will need to make, which you can read all about over here. So it's already pretty well documented here. So if you're using TypeScript, make sure you check out this blog post and I will add the link for this in the description below. So the next change is for the Cucumber projects. The Cucumber team also moved to TypeScript. So if you're using Cucumber, you will need to import the package this way now. So instead of doing require cucumber, you're going to do require add cucumber slash cucumber over here. So not really a significant change here, but just something for you guys to know about. And after that, there are a few changes as part of the Chrome DevTools service. So they are providing improved Google Lighthouse integration for your UI performance test. And they have also added the support for checking if your app supports PWA standards. The next one is good, which is with WebDriver IO version 7, they have made compiler tools like Babel and TypeScript a lot easier. So it will automatically configure everything for you as long as you have installed the necessary Babel and TypeScript packages. So no more wasting time on configuring stuff. Then there are some changes to adhere to the W3C compliance, as you can see over here, and also the support for test coverage reporting with the DevTools service. Now I haven't fully explored this yet, so I don't really know exactly how this works. And finally, as you can see that they have new website now with improved documentation. So they have a support for dark mode, which is really cool. And they also, as you can see over here, have this new community section. Now, if you open that up, you're going to see that they have some nice details over here. If you need help where you get stuck in WebDriver IO, so you can come in here and there are some folks that can help you out with it. You can also go to the discussion forum and to get some more help over here as well. Then they also have the steam section where you can read all about the people that have been contributing to WebDriver IO. And also you can go to the resources section. So here you can read about WebDriver IO book, which was by Kevin Lamping over here, which is the web app testing guide book and some video courses along with my course here as well, which is WebDriver IO tutorial for beginners. And as a side note, thank you so much for all of you guys for watching and supporting my content. I really appreciate all of that. All right. So now let's talk about the upgrade. So the good thing for the upgrade is that it's extremely easy and it should not break any code for you. So if you're using version six with JavaScript, everything should still work fine if when you upgrade to version seven. However, for the TypeScript folks, as I mentioned earlier, you might have to make few changes to get everything up and running. And you can read the blog post on that to get some more information. Now the tutorial series that I've built on WebDriver IO is using version six. So you can still go ahead and continue to watch those as none of those have been changed. So you will probably fit in one of these two scenarios. So either you're starting off with my new series. If that's the case, then you will have to install WebDriver IO. And when you will do that, you will automatically get version seven. And then you can just continue on with watching rest of my videos. Or you might have already watched some of my videos and you're using version six. In that case, you will have to upgrade to version seven, which I will show you how you can do that just now. So just so you know that you don't have to switch to version seven, but I would still recommend for you guys to do that as you will get access to all the new features as well as the bug fixes that have been done as part of v7. All right, so let's get started with the upgrade. So over here, I've pulled up the project that I've created as part of my WebDriver IO tutorial series. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this package JSON and show you that the packages, that version that we have been using as part of this package JSON. So as you can see, everything over here related to WebDriver IO is on version six. So you can see here our earlier reporter, browser stack, CLI, local runner, mockup framework, and pretty much everything else is version six. So what we need to do now is change all of this to version seven and then try to run a test and see if it would still work for us. Now, before I do that, I just want to quickly run this test to show you that everything is still working for this project. So I'm going to simply run my test. So I'm going to do this npx wdio. And all I'm doing is just running one of the tests. If I just pull up my specs file, which is right here. So I'm just running the search file right here. So I can go to test 
So it's just going to run this search.js file. So it's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to hit enter over here to run that file, and we will see if that will work for us or not. All right, so as you can see, it ran the search.js file, and our test successfully passed over here. So that's pretty awesome. So our current changes with version 6 is working successfully. So what we will do now is upgrade this to version 7 and then try to run our file again to see if something breaks or if we are able to upgrade this. So typically when you're upgrading a project, you're going to have to take a look at all the dependencies that you have in your project. Since this is a really small project, I know the dependencies that I'm using. So these are specific to Babel, WebDriver IO and Chrome Driver and Chai. So here I'm fine with kind of going ahead and upgrading all of my packages to the latest version. So instead of going ahead and updating my package one by one, what I will do is instead use a really cool package. And let me just pull that up. And that one is npm check updates. So I found about this package recently. So what it does it, it goes ahead and checks if there are some existing packages that needs to get updated. And if there is some existing packages, it will show you over here. So the red means that there's a major upgrade available. The CN color means or the blue color, it actually means there's a minor upgrade and the green color means that there's a patch upgrade. So we're going to take advantage of this and we will take a look at all the ones that we need to get updated and then we will finally do the update. So to actually use this, we're going to have to install this. So we will use npm install dash G to install this globally npm check updates. And then we can do our usage here, which is ncu and it will give you the entire list of what needs to get updated. And then you can run ncu dash u to update your package JSON. So it's really straightforward. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm back in VS code. And the first thing before we install anything is what we're going to do is get rid of our node modules because we do not want any of our old packages lying around. So we're going to delete all the packages and then we're going to do a fresh install. So to do that, I'm going to pull up a terminal. So I can typically just go ahead and do right click and delete that would work too. But I have noticed that while I do that, it usually takes some amount of time where it actually trying to delete. And sometimes my VS code would just stop uh, responding. So instead, I'm just going to delete it from the terminal. Since I'm using Windows, I'm going to type in the Windows command, which is rmdir forward slash q forward slash s so that it forcefully deletes and recursively deletes everything that is part of my node modules package. Then I will do node modules. Make sure you're putting node modules here so that it actually only deletes that and not deletes anything else. And then I'm going to hit enter. Also, if you're using Mac, then you'd probably do rm rf and then delete your node modules package. Okay, so as you can see, my node modules package have been deleted and everything went successful over here as well. So now it's time for us to update our packages. So before we do that, we're going to install the npm check update package so that we can quickly go ahead and figure out which packages we need to update and then we can just update that right away. So I'm going to paste that command here. So I'm doing npm install dash g npm check updates and then I'm going to hit enter. So this will install the package globally for me. And then I can use the ncu command to take a look at all the packages that needs to get updated. All right, so our package has been installed now. And to use it, I'm just going to simply type in ncu, which is the short command for npm check update. And I'm going to hit enter. So this will do an analysis on my existing package JSON and it will tell me which packages do I need to update. So ideally, we should see something like for WebDriver IO, we need to update to version 7. And the same thing for the other packages as well. All right, so it has generated this report for us and I'm just going to move this up. So as you can see over here, the things that are in red and which is basically all for WebDriver IO, it's telling me that these are all major versions that needs to get updated along with Chrome driver. I was using 83, so it says it also needs to get updated to 88. And then I also see some Babel ones, which are small updates that needs to get done, which is fine. I will go ahead and update those two as well. All right, so these are all the versions that we need to get updated. So just imagine if you were doing this one by one, you're going to have to continue updating all of that. But with this package, all we can do now is I'm just going to do ncu dash u. What that will do is it will upgrade my package JSON. So I'm just going to move this down to show it to you. So right now, as you can see, all of this is version six. So I'm going to hit enter. Now, as you can see, all of them over here have been updated and it's version seven or above. Now to actually install our package, I'm just going to do npm install which will take forever to get all of this installed, but I will wait for until all of this is installed and then I will be back. All right, so all of the packages have been installed now and this did took a while. And as you can see, yep, everything worked okay. There were no errors. 
and here all the packages says version 7. So it's time for to test out if everything works. Okay, so how do we do that? So we ran our search test before. So we're gonna run this again to see if everything works. So I'm gonna do npx wdio. And just so you know, I'm not changing anything here. This is the way we were running it before. I'm running it the exact same way. I'm gonna hit enter to see if this works. Okay, so our tests have finished running. And as you can see, everything passed here. It says successfully passed and we didn't run into any issues. So there you go, we just did an upgrade from v6 to v7, we ran our test and our test successfully passed. So that is pretty awesome. Now this seems to be working fine for me for this project. If you run into any specific issues during the upgrade, you can head over to the webdriver.io github discussion section so that anyone from the team can actually help you out with any of the issues that you're running into. So I'm going to be pushing this change to github so that you guys can go ahead and take a look if you want to. And I will add the link for that in the description below. Alright, so if you enjoyed this video guys, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. You can also go to automationbrew.com to access all my blog posts and the other content. Once again, thanks for watching everyone. I will see you all in the next one.